Hello and welcome to another session in physics. In this session, we will be looking at the topic reflection of light on plane surfaces and we'll also be looking at the laws of reflection, image formation by plane mirror and we'll look at the application of reflection on plane mirrors. Seeing as this is a new term, at this point, let's move straight to the reflection of light on plane surfaces. Now, when we talk about reflection, what do we simply mean? Reflection is a phenomena of light that makes light bounce back off a surface. Look at it as when you throw a ball on a hard surface like a wall. What happens to that ball? That ball does not stick to the wall, nor does it pass through the wall but the ball bounces back off the wall. Light behaves in a similar way and that behavior of light, its ability or its tendency to bounce back off a surface is what we call reflection. We have two types of reflection. The first one is regular reflection and the second one is diffuse reflection or irregular reflection. Regular reflection is the kind of reflection that occurs on a polished surface or we can say on a smooth surface. In regular reflection, parallel rays of light are made to reflect themselves or bounce on a smooth or polished surface. When light is focused on a surface, we say that light is incident on that surface. So when you take a torchlight, for example, and then you point it on a surface, the rays of light coming out from that torchlight are incident on that particular surface where the light is focused. Also, in regular reflection, we say that the rays are reflected as parallel rays in one direction and not in multiple directions. On the other hand, like we said, the second kind of reflection, which is irregular reflection, takes place on rough surfaces or on surfaces that are not smooth, irregular surfaces, so to speak. And while in regular reflection, the reflected rays are pointed in one particular direction, under irregular reflection, the reflected rays are pointing in various directions. They are pointing in various directions due to the roughness of the surface they are in contact with. At this point, let's look at two laws of reflection that are very important and most likely you would see this in your WIAC examination. Now the two laws of reflection, we have the first one which states that the incident ray, another name for the incident ray is the focused ray as you can see from the diagram here. The incident ray, the reflected ray and the normal are all at the same point of incidence and they all lie in the same plane. Now what exactly are we trying to talk about? Now you look at the diagram here you would notice that this is the incident ray. This is the focused ray. You can call it the input light, the light that comes in from the source. And then you look at the reflected ray. The reflected ray you can call it the output ray or the output light the light that goes away from the surface upon which it has bounced. So that is what we call the reflected ray. Without the incident ray, there will be no reflected ray. The incident ray comes and it gives birth to the reflected ray. So basically the reflected ray is a byproduct of the incident ray. Now the first law of reflection is trying to help us understand that both the incident ray and the reflected ray and the normal, they all lie on the same plane. That is the first law of reflection. What about the second law of reflection? The second law of reflection states that the angle of incidence, which is I, is equal to the angle of reflection. So here is the angle of incidence, here is the angle of reflection. This is the plane and the normal. So the angle of incidence is the angle that the incident ray makes with the plane upon which it has bounced on. On the other hand, the angle of reflection refers to the angle that the reflected ray makes with the surface it has bounced on. 
using a plain mirror as an example. There's one particular thing we used to do when we were young kids growing up. We'd get our wristwatch for example and then we'll focus it out the window in the classroom so that we'll catch rays of the sun. And as these rays bounce on our wristwatch, we try to focus the rays on the face of a classmate who would want to cover his eyes and try to figure out where the rays of the light is coming from. You can also do that using a mirror to redirect the rays from the sun or from any other light. Apart from that, you can also use something like a stainless, stainless cup, stainless pan or plate, whatever that is able to reflect light. Now let's look at plane mirror and the characteristics that are formed by the plane mirror of an image, an image formed by plane mirror, its characteristics. Now we have about five characteristics of images that have been formed by plane mirrors. The first characteristic is that any image formed by a plane mirror is the same size as the object. In other words, if an object is 5 meters for instance and it stands in front of a plane mirror, the plane mirror is also give birth to the same size of the object which is 5 meters as that which is standing in front of it. Another characteristic is that it is virtual. It is virtual. The third characteristic is that it is laterally inverted. In our next few slides, we'll talk about what we mean when we say lateral inversion. Another characteristic of plane mirrors is that it is upright. It is upright, very erect. And the fifth characteristic of images formed by plane mirrors is that they are far behind the mirror as the object is in front of the mirror. So, images that have been formed by plane mirrors tend to stay far behind the mirror simply for the fact that the object is right in front of the mirror. Now, we have two kinds of images. Speaking of images, we have two types of images. The first one is a real image and the second one is a virtual image. When we talk about a real image, what are we really saying? Well, a real image is one that can be caught on a screen. A real image is one that can be caught on a screen. When it comes to real images, understand that light rays can actually pass through real images. Light rays can actually pass through real images. On the other hand, a virtual image is the opposite of a real image. So what it simply means is that if a real image is one that can be caught on a screen, a virtual image, put simply, is one that cannot be caught on a screen. And it is also one through which rays do not actually pass through. But nevertheless, one thing is certain, virtual images are still visible to the eye, same as real images. Now let's talk about lateral inversion. What do we mean by lateral inversion? Put simply, lateral inversion is the effect on plain mirror on objects that are placed in front of it, whereby the appearance of the image looks like a reversal of that particular object. Now let's see from the next slide what we're talking about. Look at this image here very well. To illustrate, when you stand in front of a mirror, let's say this is you and you're standing in front of a mirror, a plain mirror, you would notice that it seems like your right hand is now your left hand. Your right hand turns to your left inside the mirror. Your right leg turns to your left leg inside the mirror. So right now, if you can, just go stand in front of a mirror and try to raise up your right hand. And then look at your reflection inside the mirror and see whose hand is there. For you appearing in the mirror, in the mirror it's as if it's your left hand which is being raised. That is exactly what we call lateral inversion. It is the effect on plane mirrors where objects placed in front of it, it looks like it is a reversal of that object. The object is now reversed. So this is an example where we have something like lane and then it turns and it's reversed in the other direction. Ambulance written reversibly in the other direction. 
Okay, now let's look at images that are formed by inclined mirrors. Remember, we've talked about plane mirrors. At this point, let's talk about inclined mirrors. Inclined mirrors. So what do we mean when we talk of inclined mirrors? Inclined mirrors is a situation where two or more mirrors are placed at an angle to each other, thereby forming multiple images. If you've ever been to a big restaurant or eatery or a supermarket and you've had the opportunity to make use of their restrooms, you'll see that there are multiple mirrors in those restrooms. Now, when you try to look at yourself in one mirror, you would notice that other mirrors show a, a certain portion of you, if not all portions of you. And the reason for that is that these mirrors are placed at an angle to each other, so multiple images are bound to be formed. Multiple images are bound to be formed. Now, the number of images that are formed by these uh, number of mirrors is given by the equation 360 over theta, which is the angle minus 1, where n is the number of images and theta is the angle of inclination. Now, it's important to note that when theta is equal to 180 degrees, the two mirrors will act as a single mirror because they are now on a straight line that is what we call 180 degrees 180 degrees is an angle on a straight line and alternatively when theta is equal to zero it means the two mirrors are parallel to each other and the image of the object that will be placed between them will be at infinity now let's look at this example this example speaks of the reflection of a narrow beam of light that is incident normally on a plane mirror and it falls on a meter rule parallel to the mirror and at a distance of 1 meter and we're asked to calculate the angle of rotation of the mirror if the reflected beam is displaced 21.26 cm along the meter rule when the mirror is rotated. Now let's call this angle, angle O N P, where it is uh, equal to 2 theta. Now we have tan 2 theta equal to 21.26, which is the displacement length over 100. At this point, we are looking for theta, which is the angle. So when we divide 21.26 by 100, we're going to have 0 0.2126. And if we make a 2 theta the subject of the formula, it means we're going to divide both sides by tan. And this gives us the inverse of the tangent, which is the inverse of the tangent, 0 0.2126. And then we continue 2 theta equal to the uh, cotangent of this is 12 degrees. But we're looking for theta and not 2 theta. So therefore, 2 theta, we're going to divide both sides by 2. 12 degrees divided by 2, 2 will cancel to, therefore, theta is equal to 2 divided by 12, 6 degrees. That is the answer to this question. Now, let's look at a periscope. A periscope is a kind of a device. It's a, a sort of mirror that helps uh, people who are submerged underneath water to see what is going on above the surface or above the ground level. It is used in military operations by submarines. When these submarines are submerged inside the water, they can use periscopes to see what is happening on the ground. And also when um, soldiers go for covert operations or when they go for operations where they have to stay incognito or they don't want people to know where they are, they can actually go underground and then put up a, a periscope which will help them to ascertain what is going on on the ground. And this applies the principle of multiple mirrors kept at angles to each other where you can actually stay beneath and then see what is going on up. Thank you so very much for joining us in this lesson to refresh your memory on what we just discussed. Please take the test that will appear on your screen.